Yeah, I'm Christine, the Gemini Stitcher, and welcome to my sewing space. So this video is going to be all about everything I've made for the spring and summer season so far. So get yourself a brew, get comfy, and hopefully you'll get some inspiration for your summer wardrobe. See you in a minute. make quite a lot of clothes. I am addicted to fabric buying and making clothes up with them as well. So they don't hold very long in my stash normally. There are one or two things that stay in there but on the whole I buy a lot of fabric but I make a lot of clothes as well. So I'm going to look at what I made in the spring and summer so far for 2024. Excuse Esme, she loves to get in on the act. And we're going to start with dresses. I've tried to categorise these. We're going to put them all onto my body form Rita. And then you can see what they should look like on a perfect body, not on my lumpy bumpy one. So the first garment that we've got on Rita is the style arc bell dress. So we're going to look at dresses first. This is a recent make. The style arc bell dress sizing will pop up at the bottom. And then in the description, I will give you a link for purchasing the pattern if you want to replicate it. So I made a size 12. I shortened the length by about four inches. I'm a really tall five foot, so I have to shorten all of my patterns. So the veil dress has quite a plunging neckline, then it's a button down front. It's got gathers on the front yoke and a high waistband. Puffy sleeves, which I've adapted and put elastic through the ends of. Turn around, Rita. It has ruched elastic waist on the back and a back yoke with gathering at the bottom of the yoke. And an A-line floaty skirt. So that is the bell dress. We'll get Rita changed into another dress and then have a chat about that one. So this is a dress and jacket that I made for the gathering, which was a meeting and meal for like-minded sewists and we all wore me made garments. So the jacket is the Nard Libre jacket from Maison Fauve. I made the short version. The fabric that it's made in is from Maison Fauve. I've put gold piping around the front and then the detail on the back with the V in the middle, I've used the stripe in the fabric to go the opposite way. And again, there's gold piping along the V and along the back of the armhole. This jacket's got an unusual collar detail on it. It's designed to be worn open but with a lovely half collar. I'll take it off and show you the lining because I used a popping pink lining inside again from Maison Fauve, treated myself to some of their fabrics and this is going to get worn an awful lot with the summer weather that we're having in the UK. Now on to the main event, which was the dress. I made a Vogue dress and the details and pattern sizes will pop down below again. It's a plunging neckline again. It's a bit of a theme on my necklines, isn't there? 
and a cinched in waist it's got gathers at the shoulder gathers pleats at the waistband the thing i like about this dress is these beautiful flutter sleeves that are on it and they go all the way down to the waistline and then it's got a really full skirt with pleats in and side pockets you've got to have a pocket haven't you it has a invisible zip down the back and again pleats in the back to give it its fullness this has been made in a Narita Hansen fabric that I got from Guthrie and Garney but I believe they've sold out well I know they are because I got the end of the roll so that's dress number two with its matching jacket dress number three is one that I made using a very unusual fabric that had a huge panel print on it and I think it's turned out really well it has grown on sleeves, a cross body front, cinched in waistband and an elasticated back. This isn't shearing elastic, it's a panel with elastics threading through. It's quite long, ankle length and the fabric I got from the rag market in Birmingham when I was there in January it was a nightmare to sew with because it, it, it's a viscose satin fabric and super super slippery so lots of pins lots of swearing but a beautiful dress at the end of it the details of the dress pattern will pop up below as before so that's dress number three so dress number three and dress number four are the same pattern and it is the Sauvy Sundress from Sew House 7. I've made a short above the knee version in a viscose linen. Now this dress, the bodice is lined which is a lovely touch so no messy bindings or facings inside. The lining does the work of the arm and neck finishes. It's got a V front and a V back. Really nice pocket detail on this one. And then the one on Rita has been made in a an eyelet embroidered viscose in cream that I got from Guthrie and Garney. And to keep my modesty, this one I've fully lined in a cream cotton lawn that I got from Abacars. And again, low front, low back. Both of these were made in a size four. So they're the dresses. Next, we're going to move on to shorts and co sets. Before we move on to the shorts and co-ord sets i put this one in with the dresses it's a poolside throw on but it's a dress if you like it's sold as a tunic tile style top and i'll put the details below it's got a ruched in waist at the back with elastic drawstring and then fabric drawstring at the front a really plunging neckline and because I'm vertically challenged, I've left it the length that it was, which was meant to be a hip length, and it's about there on me. But it's turned out really well. I've used a fabric that is semi opaque, got this from Little Eggs Fabrics, and yeah, it's going to get worn a lot on my holes. So, loving this one. So there are all the dresses. Let's move on to shorts and co-ops. Play suit. It's an all-in-one from one of my favourite pattern companies, Maison Fauve. It's got pleat details. Yes, it's got pleat details, baby, on the shoulders. And 
unusual button detail with an angled front side pockets cleats in the shorts and cute little turn ups on the end and then an invisible zip up the back the fabric I've used is from the Silk Store in Birmingham and it is a stretch cotton sateen. Loving this, can't wait to wear it on my holes. So that's my co-ord stroke shorts outfit number one. Co-ord set number two is a pair of the free range sat is a pair of the free range slacks from Sew House 7 done as a pair of shorts and I've put a cheeky lace panel up the side panel that matches the lace in the Donny top. So it's the free range slacks cut into shorts. They've got pockets, elasticated waist, two pockets in the back and they have a side panel that gives you room to play with the colour combinations. And I've teamed it up with a Donny shirt in the broad round blaze that's in the side panels. This is a wardrobe staple for a lot of people. Cute pocket on the front. Nice collar detail. And then, and then a double yoke at the back with some gathers. I've shortened this so that it comes to hip, high hip length, and then it goes well with the shorts. It's a McCall's pattern top that I've had for a long time. I will put the details below. And I've teamed it up with another pair of the free range slacks made as shorts. Back pockets again. Side pockets in the front. And then the side panels with these ones, I've played around with the direction of the fabric and done it horizontally instead of vertically, just to create a little bit of detail. So they're going to see me coming with this one on, aren't they? I'm not going to get lost in a crowd, but I do like it. I love the contrast of the apple green and the lilac. I think it's absolutely genius. I'm so happy and summery. And this has got to be one of my all-time favourite top stroke blouses that I've ever made. It's my take on the Maison Fauve Zenith blouse with the sunray pleats radiating out from the neckline. I've used lace fabric and used the edge of the lace for the sleeve finish and the finish on the edge. And then I've also added a little cute collar with lace edging as well. And then the other thing that I've done different to the Maison, to the, and the other thing I've done different to the Zenith blouse is I've put a cute button detail back on this blouse. So this has been made in lace from Maison Fauve. The sizes for the Zenith will pop up below. It can be made in any fabric and my toile was done in a bright pink linen so I'll just pop that one on and you can see what the original version of the Zenith looked like compared to this lace version. Linen. It has got the radiating sunbeam from the neckline, but the neckband is finished off with a binding, bias binding. The sleeves are turned up and the hem is turned up. And then the back has just got a keyhole opening at the top and no buttons. But I think in a popping pink fabric, plain is best. Keep it simple, make the fabric work for itself. But that is my twelve version which actually fit very well of the zenith this year i've made two versions of it and it's a free pattern it's the miranda tea from tiana's closet and it has this beautiful detail 
swaying detail, like a busty air really, isn't it? Along the upper bust line. And I've then used that to my advantage. And in my stripy fabric, I've gone vertical in the main body to give myself length and height. And then I've gone across at the yoke to broaden my shoulders out because I've got narrow shoulders. And on this version, I've lengthened the sleeves and made them three quarter. Oh, we're flashing. you're flashing your bum right. The back's in two panels, which is great for fitting purposes. And that's again been done vertically and then across the diagonal at the top. So that was my three quarter sleeve version. And I've then made a short sleeve version, again in stripy fabric, because I think this pattern really suits it. And I've gone vertically and horizontally the same as the three quarter sleeve, but then I've put some little puff sleeves in that don't come with this pattern, but I got these from the Galaxy T pattern. And I'll put the link in the details for that one as well. So short sleeve Miranda Galaxy mashup, three quarter sleeve Miranda top. And that is all the tops I've made are going to be costumes and bags. I've made two costumes and two bags. So we'll do the costumes first. I'm going to do the costumes first. Rita has gone for a lie down after all that hard work. I'm not battling getting a costume on Rita. So unfortunately, you're going to have to see them like this and imagine what they look like on. So this is the first one that I made. The costumes are both the Coralie swimsuit from Tilly and the Buttons. Love this pattern. Thought I was going to struggle with these ruffles, but they weren't too bad. And practice makes perfect, doesn't it? So it has a ruffle on the front and back. This is the high back version. It has a built-in bra shelf and it's fully lined. And I've made this in some fabric that I got from Ruth McIntyre's D-Stash. So I haven't got a clue where it's from. Wish on you because it's beautiful fabric, excellent quality swim fabric, and it's got a great stretch to it. So that's swimsuit number one. And then swimsuit number two is again the Coralie in a really bright colours. I've got the frill on again, and then this one has got more of a scooped back to it. And it's got the bra shelf in the same as the first one. Now, I think I prefer the higher back just because it feels a little bit more safe. I'm a little bit worried I'm going to lose a boob in this one. But, you know, it's all right for sunbathing in the other one for swimming. I guess that's the way to look at it. This fabric is from First for Fabrics. Again, good stretch to it. Not quite as much stretch as the other one but still more than adequate for a swimsuit. So they're my two swimmers. First time I've made them, made up with those. So then last but not least, I've got two bags that I made, both noodle head bags. We'll just put the big one down in a minute. The first one is the present tote bag, which is great everyday bag, lots of room in it. Love the shape of it. It's got a zip pocket on the front. And then another zip pocket on the inside. These fabrics were from Tuesday's Child Fabrics and the one for the other bag that I'm going to show you is as well. So bob over to their website. They've got some beautiful bag fabrics. And I got the webbing from there as well, which was really good value. and excellent quality so that's the crescent tote bag from noodle head and that's going to be my everyday stroke beach bag for my holes and then last but definitely not least is the 
oxbow overnight bag. I can't tell you enough how proud I am of this bag. I thought it was beyond my capabilities, but the instructions in the noodle head pattern book is brilliant. So this bag has been done two-tone. The base and the pocket at the front are one fabric and then the rest of the outer is another fabric. Again, both from Tuesday's Child Fabrics and the matching webbing was from Tuesday's Child as well. I've put some beautiful golden crafting cotton on the inside and that was from Abercarns at Mostyn. Zip it up. It's got normal carrying handles and then it has an adjustable strap as well. This bag takes more than you think, holds more than you think. It's deceiving. And it's going to be my carry-on bag for when I go on my holes. So there we go. They're all the things that I've made for spring and summer so far in 2024. I hope you managed to stay with me. I hope you've got some inspiration. All the details for the pattern, hope, patterns hopefully will have been popping up as I've been talking and they will also be in the show notes below. So if you want to be, recreate the look that I've created for my cruise, then get yourself onto the fold line, get the patterns bought and get stitching. I hope you have a wonderful sewing week and I will see you all soon. Love you loads. Bye for now.